Are you all awake? Yeah. Amen. 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 Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, all of you beautiful, wonderful people out there. So happy you could join us. I'm just going to do a scripture reading, but I just, I'm just excited to hang out with you. Because it's Shabbat. Hey, yes, it's Shabbat. And it is a beautiful day, and we're thankful that you are not in, a, in an earthquake 7.7. We're grateful that your buildings are not falling down. And we're grateful. He is protecting and keeping you. And we woke up this morning, and there's not a cloud in the sky and no wind. Yep. See, so when they don't spray the sky, he doesn't He doesn't do that. But when they spray the sky, forget it. He just wipes it out. Literally, horizon to horizon, not a cloud in the sky. Beautiful, beautiful. And the green is popping. Yes, it is. <laughs> I noticed the mountain was turning green, really green. I'm like, there we go. Here it comes. So shalom to all of you. Thank you so much. Oh, we've got someone joining us from Wales. Wales. Yes. Oh, Yay. Hi, Wales. Wales. Look at that. He's joining us from Wales. Wait, let me put it on the screen. From <laughs> Wales, UK in the house. <laughs> and then and then there's my sister Sue who's got six inches of snow. <laughs> it's like, no, not the six inches of snow program. My goodness. Right? Oh, from Scotland. Hi, Scotland. Yes. Scotland. Welcome, Scotland. Welcome, Scotland. I can't do a Scottish accent. No, that's I think that's I think that's Australian. <laughs> I've been hanging out with our Australian friends too long. <laughs> hanging out with, with all of our... Uh, yeah, see, and Octavia says she has sunny skies and no wind here there today. Tons of green. So, you know, we're linked. You know, the Martinez households are linked. Okay. It's just awesome. There's two so, more tennis Dad. Let me, I know. Let me get some <laughs> more. Which one? I don't, do you know? Well, good, probably good not question. us because we're sitting here with them. So right? Say, so. <laughs> <laughs> My son, the wise guy, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have an awesome Pesach? It looks like a beautiful, a lot of people had a really great Pesach. And um, we posted some of the pictures on the discussion board. So if you're not on the discussion board, get on over there because uh, that's usually where we do some of our more, I guess, personal stuff yeah. and yeah. drop some of the things that are happening kind of right here. And uh, I was really blessed. They got the fire going last night. Yeah. And yeah. Burned what remained of what was awesome food. So it was almost sad to say it, goodbye to it, but it had to go. So... <laughs> Uh, that is, that was awesome. Uh, everyone did a fantastic job yesterday. That was a blessed, blessed Pesach. And so I pray that all of you had a great Pesach wherever you are. I pray that it was a blessing. And uh, we just thank Yahuwah. Everybody say, Yada Yahuwah. Yada Yahuwah. Amen. We are so thankful for uh, being together. And again, wherever in the earth you may be, we just pray the blessing of Elohim is upon you there to preserve you and keep you. Even as Moshe was with his family and of course, Aaron and his family, and they were, uh, in their place, but they had to pray for the whole 600,000 men with women and children. That's a lot of people. Okay. When you really think about the Exodus, that was a lot of people. And then he says that this one will be even bigger. So who knows how many of the Nazarim really are out there right now? Right. Probably 144,000. That's my guess, right? <laughs> I don't know. Where did I get that number, right? <laughs> so, yes, I am so thankful for all of those. And you all are representative of that group that I believe is awakening in this hour even people that once opposed and once were angry and maybe resentful toward us and and what have you they're starting to wake up and and i just got a note this morning it's very encouraging um just you know people that are that were once antagonistic you know what i mean just like pugnacious and now they're going um maybe not 
maybe we should check. And this is what we always tell everybody, you know, don't get mad at us for being the messenger, right? All of you have had this experience where you're like, look, I didn't do it. I'm not the one who lied to you. I'm just telling you that they lied. Right. I'm just telling you they covered these things up and we need to get them back again, right? So yes, they're starting to ask questions and people are starting to dig a little more, which is absolutely what we're hoping for. And again, springtime, so little buds start popping up and you go, ooh, ooh, growth. Yeah. <laughs> right? Isn't that what we do? We're like, oh, a little bud. Okay, water that again. Sunshine, blessing. Like, we just want it to grow, you know, and just want people to look and check and double check and, and don't uh, settle for um, dogmas and doctrines that were passed to you by those whom Mashiach warned would go to over hill and dale to make twice the servants of hell as themselves. Those who have already committed the abominable sin, uh, the unforgivable sin. And and uh, then they went out there and said, well, I'm going to the fire. I'm going to try and take as many with me. I mean, I know that's crazy, right? We don't think like that. They do. So just realize, don't underestimate your enemy. Right. And this is something that, of course, Yahuwah knew the whole time that the Egyptians would chase and some of you have experienced that. In fact, when we talked about the, how many, you know, when we talked about the Feast of uh, Unleavened Bread and talked about going through the whole seven days, really didn't think about like where certain events happened during that seven day period of the original Exodus right. and how that correlates to your own departure from this world, from the things of this world, right? I, I think a lot of people were like, hey, I never thought about that. And you need to get to day 21, right? So the 21st day of the month, which is, of course, you know, the sixth day. And that's interesting because we got clips coming on the sixth day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And then, of course, the final day, which is the seventh day and the day of another uh, holy convocation. So that's what these are called. When we get together on a Shabbat, today is a high Shabbat, right? Do I have a calendar? Okay, let me grab that. Today is a high Shabbat. And um, when we get together on a high Shabbat, uh, you know your enemy is going to come and try and stop you from enjoying that Shabbat. And so, by the way, on the calendar, somebody asked me about this, and I just think I should just point this out since I have you all here. Uh, you'll notice that we put certain days in green. Right. So that is like a quick reference that that's a high Sabbath day. Yeah. OK, so you want to close your gates. You want to be with your family. You want to do no servile work. And our brother, Jerael Toma, put out a really great article of the difference between work and servile work, oh. um, which was really informative and very helpful. So go on over to the Truthers Journal for that. Uh, and so look at that. We have we have people that had neighbors join them. Um, it's just such a wonderful thing. And, and this is part of what we get to share as a family. So Yada Yahuwah, I'm so grateful for everyone that is now paying attention. And those that are not yet awake, well, we're just going to continue to pray. They're still alive. There's still hope. Okay. Amen. They're still alive. There's still hope. And uh, we need to pray for our brethren who, you know, it's easy to become cynical. It's easy to become hard hearted. Um, if you let the sun go down on your anger, you risk the root of bitterness. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me say that again. If you let the sun go down on your anger, you risk the root of bitterness. And there have been many that have done that. And this is why it's so important to cultivate a heart of forgiveness and to be a gentle hearted person. Even though you're abused, I know. Even though you're taken advantage of, I know. Even though they will take everything from you and then laugh at you as they leave. I get it. You cannot allow a root of bitterness to spring up and defile you. Okay. And so we cannot have uh, unforgiveness in our hearts. It may be in others, but we can't allow it. We just can't afford that. Yeah. We have to remain yes. Kadosh and continue down the road of Kadosh and be as our father in heaven who puts rain upon the just and the unjust. Right. And so this is how we demonstrate that our lives are, in fact, changed is our grace and our mercy, even unto those who don't deserve it. Amen. I mean, it's easy to forgive people who love you and hug you and tell you you're wonderful. 
not so easy when they hate you. But he tells us to love even our enemies. Amen. Amen. And if you could see the fire that most are going to, you would pray even harder. Yeah. Amen. We would be even more forgiving. And so, of course, we see through the entire seven-day period, various events were occurring that correspond with your personal deliverance, your individual salvation, which you work out. How? with fear and trembling amen so taking nothing for granted and asking forgiveness along the way because we make little mistakes and we go "Ooh, we weren't supposed to do that oh father forgive me right and or didn't prepare correctly some people might be coming under condemnation because maybe they didn't feel like they prepared correctly well now you know and you can do it better next time so you can keep improving and this is the direction that we all must continue to walk amen after all when they left egypt they didn't know nothing. As I like to say, they were wet behind the ear, right? <laughs> they had to go to the mountain of Akrite, okay? So they could get a double dose of Akrite <laughs> because they were coming out of there like heathen. And out of 600,000 men, how many men made it to the promised land? Two. Two. So it is a difficult journey and one we cannot take for granted. Uh, and so it is a humbling thing, and this is why we pray that you are all, like Yahusha and Caleb, that you are all ready to take on whatever giants need to be taken on, do whatever it is that Elohim puts in front of us to do. And today we're going to be reading from Exodus chapter 13, and uh, going from verse 1 through 16, and we're also, there's another reading on the second part, Numbers chapter 28, verses 19 through 25. So for those of you that want to open up your scripture, the first one we're going to be going to is Exodus 13, chapter 13, and we're going to start in verse 1. And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Yasharel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. So he's making a declaration here, saints, let us remember and Moshe said unto the people, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Remember this day. For by strength of hand, Yahuwah brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. This day came you out in the month Abib. And it shall be when Yahuwah shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which he swear unto your fathers to give thee a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep this service in this month. So this travels with you. You don't leave it back in Egypt. You don't say, yeah, thanks, and walk off. You carry it with you. Seven days. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread. In the seventh day shall be a feast to Yahuwah. So again, another holy convocation coming. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days. And there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee. Neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done. Are you listening, son? This is done because of that which Yahuwah did unto me when I, came forth out of Egypt, and it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand, and for a memorial between thine eyes, that Yahuwah's Torah may be in thy mouth, for with a strong hand hath Yahuwah brought thee out of Egypt, judging all of their gods, right? Therefore, Thou shalt therefore keep his ordinance in his season from year to year, and it shall be when Yahuwah shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, as he swear unto thee and to thy fathers, and shall give it thee, that thou shalt set apart unto Yahuwah all that openeth the matrix, and every firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast, the males be shall be Yahuwah's. And every firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb, and if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck. And all the firstborn of man among thy children shalt thou redeem. And it shall be when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What is this that thou shalt say unto him? By strength of hand of Yahuwah brought us out of from Egypt 
from the house of bondage. And it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that Yahuwah slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore I sacrifice to Yahuwah all that openeth the matrix, being males, but all the firstborn of my children I redeem. Amen. And it shall be for a token upon thine hand and for frontlets between thine eyes. For by strength of hand, Yahuwah brought us forth out of Egypt. Somebody say amen. 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 And in Numbers 28, beginning in verse 19, but ye shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto Yahuwah, two young bullocks and one ram and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil. Three tenth deals shall ye offer for a bullock, and two tenth deals for a ram. A several tenth deal shalt thou offer for every lamb throughout the seven lambs. And one goat for a sin offering to make atonement for you. And ye shall offer these beside the burnt offering in the morning, which is for a continual burnt offering. After this manner, ye shall offer daily throughout the seven days the meat of the sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. It shall be offered beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And on the seventh day, ye shall have a holy, a kadosh convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. Yada Yahuwah. Amen. And so... We continue to honor and respect these things, even though we have now Hebrews 10, right? So we know that he uh, is now the propitiation of sin. And through his blood, through the veil, we come in. Nevertheless, we respect these days and we continue to honor him with the first fruits, with our prayers, with our de devotion to do that which he's called us to do. Because after all, who now is the sacrifice? Who wants to tell me who the sacrifice is now? You are. Because you are a living sacrifice. Amen. You are what is holy. You are what is kadosh and acceptable unto Yahuwah. Right? And are you not all the first fruits? Aren't you all the ones he's bringing in first? Who he is drawn by his ruach in this generation? And so you are sacrificed for sake of those who have yet to come in. And isn't it true that you are lit on fire? For as you go forth into the nations, are you not lit on fire? Do you not have the fire of Elohim within you? Are you not a consumed fire? Are you not a flame of fire? Amen. And so as a living sacrifice, our bodies are given over for sake of our brethren. For there were many lambs that were sacrificed in egypt before okay. the departure and so even you are given as a sacrifice even each of you many of you have had to suffer many of you have been beat up many of you have been abused many of you uh felt like your neck was broken by the way the world treated you by the way in which they have derided, derided you and insulted you and distanced themselves from you but know that this was all for elohim's purpose for in the same way they treated uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were they were outcasts. They were like, you're going to get us in trouble. You bunch of loud mouths, will you just bow? You're going to get us all uh, in big trouble. But no, they refused to bow. They were uncompromising. They were the small branch that was holding fast. The watchman who said, we will not bow to this idol. We would rather be a burnt sacrifice Amen. than to give in to this world right and so this is where the uncompromising comes in and the uh, unleavened bread the time period where you say absolutely none will i allow into my life and so we are thankful of course for uh, that example but we are reminded that we are called to be living sacrifices kadosh and acceptable unto Yahuwah, which is our reasonable service. I like to say it's the least we can do. After all, what he has given to us. Amen. Amen. And so we must be an uncontaminated people. Yes, as my sister said. And even though we know 
that we still have our battles in the flesh. We still have this corruptible that must take on incorruptible. We still press forward toward the mark, the high calling which is in Mashiach Yahusha. We continue to follow our Mashiach. We didn't just read it in a book. We live it in our lives. This is why miracles continue to manifest. This is why healing continues even to this day. This is why appropriate signs and wonders will accompany the Nazarene. Amen. Not the kind that the world chases because, after all, they are pursuing mammon and the things of mammon, having been deceived by clever witches. But you who have figured it out, you who have discerned the hand of the enemy and the hand of Elohim, now seeing the difference between the Kadosh and the profane, you are left profanity. You have left false deities. You are left behind the worship of these things. And now are chasing the living Elohim. Somebody say amen. 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 Yada Yahuwah, yada, yada Yahuwah. Yada. And so take the encouragement that is meant for you. Don't be discouraged as you see uh, difficult uh, people being difficult and some still hanging on to this world. This is the process. This is why your life is sown the way it is. And those of you that are young, that are just beginning your journey, do not be discouraged by the things you see. For the reason why you have that journey in front of you is because of those that have gone before you. And they battled hard. And many of them gave their lives so we could have this word. How many are thankful for the Nazarim 2,000 years ago who were so thoughtful and forward-thinking that they hid in jars and sealed it onto the last days, the words of the living Elohim. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. And for that reason, we have great rejoicing as we look at these things and we say, oh, thank you, Father. Thank you for our great father, Enoch. Thank you for all of the scribes that were righteous, all of the good servants who with their very lives saved and preserved the word that we would receive it today. You would not have a Bible. You would not have scriptures. You would not have anything were it not for those who went before us and literally sowed their lives as a flame of fire, a burnt offering that you would have life. So those words would reach your table. So those blessed things would come into your life and you could review them and read them. This is why we cherish things that are sent to us through the centuries, like a message in a bottle that finally gets to its destination. When you read that, you realize we are greatly loved, have been loved before they even knew us. What kind of prophetic sight do you have to have to love a generation you haven't even seen? Just think about that. Think about how much love that really represents. And so when you read your scripture, don't just read the words, read the love that was poured into the effort to make sure that you receive the message. And even when our enemy came in like a flood to taint everything, to destroy what Elohim had written and to bring the lying pen of the scribes and the wicked twistings of those who wish to put you into bondage, when the enemy came in like a flood, the Ruach of Elohim lifted up a standard against them. And he brought forth pure scripture that had not been tainted to expose their fraud. He brought forth his writings that had been hidden because that which was hidden was then revealed. Even as all of you are now what was once hidden, but now you shine brightly, right? And he tells us, arise, shine, for thy light has come. And the kavod of Yahuwah has arisen upon thee. And so as we pray, my prayer for each and every one of you is that you will not allow the voices of those trained by Pharisees to diminish your light, that you will not allow those who are under delusion or deception to in any way inhibit your freedom, but instead continue marching toward the mountain that he has called you to, continue to walk toward the high things that he has granted unto you, and remember your Mashiach. Remember that we grow stronger even in suffering, even in difficulty. Even when they put hard bondage upon Yashalel, 
Yasharel grew into an army. And so it is with you. When they try and persecute you, all they do is make you stronger. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Give him some praise. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and pray and then release you all so you can enjoy this beautiful day and uh, rest in this Shabbat, which is a, a Kadosh convocation. And for those of you that are part of this house, we encourage you to continue to honor him, to make those sacrifices that he asks you to make. Uh, don't be stubborn about that. Do it diligently. Let him see you run to do it. And that way, the blessing will run and overtake you. And I believe he is pouring out blessing even now. And it is only disobedience that keeps it from landing upon your life. So be obedient. Be quick to obey in this hour. Let's pray. Baruch atah, blessed are you, Yahuwah Elohim, maker of heaven and earth, Melech HaOlam. We thank you, Father, for every one of these, our brothers and sisters throughout the earth, who are keeping and holding fast in accordance with the Zadok calendar and in accordance to the way you commended in Ezekiel. And so, Father, we thank you that they are set apart unto this hour, a sacrifice, even enduring the ridicule and the, the words of evil and those uh, things that are trying to snatch and steal the word you have given to us. But they endure it. And having passed the test of the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things, they have come into the Kadosh day. And I thank you, Father, that your blessing be upon their houses, your blessing be upon their children, your blessing upon all that they touch and all that they have. May your Ruach continue to bless and keep them, that they would continue to bring forth your Kavod. And we thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against them will prosper. And every tongue raised against them, they themselves shall condemn for this is their heritage, and their zedakah is of you, for you have declared it. And we thank you for this. In the name of our Kohen Haggadol, Yahusha HaMashiach, Melech HaOlam. And we thank you for it. Amen and amen. Give him the amen. praise. Amen. 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 It is always good to get. Somebody, we went an hour yesterday and somebody said, that ended too quick. I'm like wow well i I'm, I'm sorry we'll hang out with you again tomorrow <laughs> we'll do it again tomorrow so uh again we have seven days <clears throat> and as we go through this uh time period contemplate each one of the days contemplate what happened on that day and how that relates to your life contemplate that and let him deepen your gratitude for your salvation don't be like those who left Egypt and took these things for granted and grumbled and complained and provoked him 10 times. How many times? 10 times. They completed it. They went to full, complete provo provocation. So don't do that. Instead, be humble, repentant, and be thankful for everything he gives you, for this is a testing time. And after you've passed the test, what does he say? After you have suffered a little while, he will settle, establish, and perfect you. Amen. amen and amen. So that's our prayer for all of you. And we pray that each and every one of you are established and perfected. Shabbat shalom. Say shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom.